Y'all, look at this Orange Beach, Alabama, beautiful place. Empty boat trailer, that means the boat's launched. If you already know, you know. Y'all, Steve and Bama Saltwater Fishing, what is going on? I'm happy that y'all can join me today on this fishing trip. We're actually gonna head offshore, just on the other side of that beach right there. Maybe 20 miles, maybe 40, maybe 10, who knows? We'll see when we get out there. But y'all come step with me on the boat and let's get out there and have a good time. We just got to the pass in Orange Beach. We're gonna go right under that bridge right there and get out in the Gulf, y'all. I'll see you at my fishing spot. If we see anything else out in between, you'll know about it. <laughs> Check it out. Island's still busy today. Gorgeous day to be out, tell you that. And I'm glad y'all can share it with me. Man, it's beautiful water out here. Awesome, awesome day. Get through that boat wake. There we go. Uh, other than that, it's flat. Heck yeah, we're going to have a good time. Y'all, it is slick out here today. Alrighty, y'all. Found our first little scattered grass patch or grass mat. There is some bait on it. It is slick as glass out here on the Gulf of Mexico. What a great day. I'm only like 25, 26 miles. We're already about to hit blue water. We're in that transition. I looked at the charts last night and the blue water is in pretty close. So I'm gonna throw a bucktail jig. A little one ounce spro bucktail around this grass mat and see if we can pick up anything hanging around. Just gonna be tossing that on a 5,000 size Daiwa Saltis and a seven foot medium heavy offshore spinning rod. Boom, right in the middle of it. Oh, they're hitting it. Mm. All righty, fish on. <laughs> Come on, man. Yep, little bitty chicken dolphin or schoolies. As some of y'all call them. Look at them. Oh, there we go. Man, he was pretty. He was definitely pretty. There's a bunch of them. These are actually a little bit bigger than the ones I was catching a few uh, days back. These are actually decent size. <clears throat> I may keep a few of these, take some home. They grow fast, they're very abundant. I don't do this often. Oh, there he goes. But if they come off like that, it's fine with me. This water is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, there they are. <laughs> There's a remora. Is that a remora or a cobia? Caught one. You gonna give me a jump before you come off? Come on, give me a little jump, buddy. <laughs> Look at all of them. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> Look at the colors on that fish, y'all. Wow, that thing's pretty. I'm gonna let him go. It's not bleeding bad. There we go. Single hook jig for the win. Check that out. Like I said, I'm not after these small ones. I'm more of a going after quality over quantity today. But you do have to have a little bit of fun with them. Look at that. <laughs> little schooly dolphin again. He can actually go in the cooler. That's not a bad one. Uh, he's got a little bit more meat on him. There's no sense in throwing this one back with them bleeding out and those bottlenose dolphin behind me. He's a little bit bigger than most of them, so he's gonna go in the cooler. I can get plenty of meat off this one. Gulf of Mexico, there are no size limits. They're very abundant out here, and I don't get to do this much. But check that out. What a beautiful mahi-mahi. Y'all, so this is sargasm weed, or sargasm grass. This is what mats up out here. A lot of times, you can take a big clump of it, especially the closer it gets to the beach, which this one doesn't have anything in it. 
but little bitty grass shrimp, small even seahorses will be in there. There's so much life that lives in this grass. And that's what attracts this bigger bait fish. And then those bigger bait fish attract the pelagic fish, like your dolphins, wahoos, marlins, tunas, and all the like. All right. Flipping grass mats on the main lake point. <laughs> it's kind of what it feels like if you like bass fishing. Except we're over 100 foot of water. So, Y'all, so I'm going to be trolling two setups right now. One is a little Sea Witch style lure. This one's by Sea Striker, a little pink silver duster with the Ballyhoo pre-rigged. And then this one is a chugger, a little mini chugger head with another pre-rigged Ballyhoo. Both come to a snap swivel, ball bearing snap swivel. And this is on a Shimano Speedmaster with some 50 pound braid and another heavy power offshore rod. So I'm gonna troll the edge of this grass line, see if we can find a little bit bigger fish than those little schooly dolphin. Let's get these lures out there. Now, when you troll ballyhoo before you rig it, you wanna let them naturally thaw and get out all the crap out of there without blowing out the belly. And then kind of squeeze gently along their backbone or along their back, I should say, to break their backbone. They'll swim a lot better this way. Now you can also remove the eyes, these are not but you definitely want to make sure that they're cleaned out. So I'm going to do the same thing with both of them and get these out of there. Oh, what are you? Let's get our leash off. Ooh, there's a bunch of grass on it. It's our first fish today. I put out a planer with a drone spoon as well in addition to my ballyhoo. And guess what? That was the first thing to get hit. Let's see what it is. Bunch of grass on the planer, but I see silver down there. So now I gotta hand line it in. So bring our planer up. <clears throat> and then this is a fun part, is getting to hand line that fish in. Looks like it's a bonita. Yep, a little toony. So we're gonna bring him in nice and slow. <laughs> this is fun. Come on. Planters are so effective. Look at him, that's so fun. Heck yeah, dude. That's a nice little toony. But what I'm actually gonna do is flip that gator spoon upside down and let that joker go. There you go. I don't need any more little toonies, but this is just what I'm throwing. This is a purple number 350 Gator King Spoon and about 30 feet of 50 pound fluorocarbon leader, ball bearing snap swivel and a size two planer. So in addition to my chugger, then I did throw a blue and white Islander on that rod. But the planer allows that spoon to actually get down about 25, 30 feet and reach a lot of those fish that are deeper. So we're gonna reset and see what else we can catch. Oh yeah, planer rod just got hit again. So I was reeling this planer in with the spoon to get the grass off of it. And it looks like we have a fish on it. Yeah, we do. Check that out. A little bitty schooly dolphin fish. A pretty little thing. Look at you, ain't you just a baby? Gorgeous colors on them. You gotta love those things. But that spoon should come out pretty easy and he gone swimming away healthy that's awesome now these planers are pretty cool they're pretty much like a deep diving crankbait for your spoon or whatever lure you want to attach behind of it you attach a ball bearing swivel to this ring on the planer and this is a number two it has a two ounce weight right here causing the planer to fall like this this flat edge acts like the lip of a crankbait causing it to dive and you're pulling it like this and then your lure or bait's trailing behind. Now when a fish takes it, it trips and makes it in line, hence the name inline planer. And it makes it a lot easier to reel up. Because if you're reeling like this, it is a lot of resistance. So that's also why you wanna have a pretty forgivable rod. You can also tie the planers off the end of your cleat and have a downrigger type setup. But I rarely do that. I just don't like things kinda dangling behind my boat. 
So I'm moving spots out deeper, but I just wanted to show y'all how flat it is out here. Absolutely amazing. Y'all, I'm practically at 45-ish miles. Going to be working my way out to 50. I decided to come out deeper. Practically the same setup. Got a chugger with the ballyhoo. Instead of that gator spin behind the planer, I'm going to be running a blue and white islander with the ballyhoo rigged up behind the planer. That's a great way of catching fish. And then another one of these dusters with the ballyhoo. So we're going to get these out and troll them. See what we can catch. Right. Just got a nice dolphin on this one. And this was the Islander with the planer. Hopefully he's still on. Yeah, he is. What a pretty fish. I had already missed one. So this is gonna be fun trying to hand line him. See which side of the boat he wants to come on. I think he wants to come on this one. Now I'm gonna stop the boat. You usually don't want to stop the boat. But on this one we are. Yeah. Come on, buckaroo. <laughs> Get over here. Oh, come on. Woo! <laughs> Putting on a show. Mm. Dang. It's like trying to handle my dog <laughs> on a leash. <laughs> Not easy. Let's bring them in, y'all. There we go. Heck yeah, that's what I came out here for. Not quite a giant bull like I've caught before, but that's a solid, solid mahi-mahi or dolphin fish. This is a cow, to the best of my knowledge. But that's a perfect fish, look at that mouth. She fell for that planer and the islander, so I'm gonna rig up again, reset, and try to get another one. Beautiful things, I think. Look at that color on them. That is awesome. I have another ballyhoo. I'm gonna show you how I like to rig it. All I crimp up, are these pin rigs because of how little I pull ballyhoo out here. And this is pretty simple to do. There's so much information online, but this is a little ballyhoo pin rig. Now, you wanna prep your ballyhoo by letting them thaw out naturally. And then we're gonna squeeze out all that innards like I had shown before. So let me do that so I don't do it all over my boat's console. So here we go. Get all that crap out, literally <laughs> crap. So that one's pretty empty. Now, the next thing I like to do is break their back. So just pinch along carefully and you can kind of see it flatten out. They'll swim a lot better that way. I usually do about the back half of them. So once that's done, this is optional, but I like to take out the eyes. Usually like a pencil or old ink pen casing works pretty good, but I just kind of use the hook. I like to break the bill off just in front of the top part of its mouth. See the bills on the bottom? See how I left a little bit there? Throw that out. Now you wanna lay your hook. This is an Adult J hook, but you're gonna go through right in between the gills and then come out in the belly. You want it as straight as you can get it. Otherwise, it's gonna spin and not look natural that way. So kinda of curl it, make sure it comes out perfectly down below and then that hook and eye should sit nice and straight. Now this is where the pin rig comes in handy. I actually made that a little too high. There we go. This pin is gonna go right below the head and then come out the top, ow, without poking yourself. <laughs> and see, it should look like that. Now we're gonna take this spring and the GoPro doesn't do things up close good, but you're gonna wind that pin and screw it into that spring. See, all the way till it stops. And you wanna have you a good bit of these tied up before you come out. Cause the last thing you wanna do is be crimping a bunch of stuff out here, especially when the bite's hot. And then when you get a bite, you can just cut it off or unsnap it and then tie you another one on. There we go. So now you can kind of fold that down. And now this is where it's fun. You can throw anything you want on there. But the one I've been rigging up, this is a blue and white Islander lure. A very popular lure. You can catch almost anything that swims out here on it. So we're gonna get this back out and get my other spreads back out and see what else we can get. So when putting my lures out, I like to put the 
one that's going to be the farthest back out first always make sure that ballyhoo is not spinning it's actually swimming well you may have to adjust your speed depending on your rig different lures pull at certain speeds i like this chugger to be all the way back I actually lost a nice mahi on this one a little bit before that one bit but i want this at the very back of my whitewash now it's time to get my little duster rig out these are all weightless planer with the nylander out back out there we go the longer the leader from your planer the better see and that planer catches and if you want to have fun just start reeling in the planer by itself i'm gonna keep this one short now we have all three out. We're trolling in about 420 feet of water. I'm just kind of working my way around this edge. See those tight contour lines? That's like a cliff around the water. So that's what I'm doing is working around the edge. Now I see something up here and I'm not for sure what it is. Something big that's floating. I haven't seen it yet. Wow. Y'all, this thing's smoking drag. Mm. Smoking drag. Good Lord. What do y'all think it's gonna be? This might be a while. Huh, what an awesome, awesome bite. But this is gonna take forever ever to get this line back i mean forever <sighs> haven't even seen it yet come on <sighs> this is awesome Y'all, if it's a wahoo, that would be cool. But, dude, it took almost half the spool. I've not seen, seen it yet. That was awesome. And it was on the chugger, too. Come on. How cool is that? The gap is all the way back there. How awesome is this? There you go, be a right hander. I do not want to get bit by that thing. Dude, that is a stud. Woo! <laughs> oh my gosh. Y'all, so I don't know how much of the fight that got. It's because this dumb camera turned off. So it was only this one. I think this one was probably pointing down. But I just caught my biggest Wahoo ever. And actually my first one. So this is pretty sweet. Look at those teeth. <laughs> wow, that's a big, big Wahoo. Golly. Check out the size of that wahoo. Good gracious. That's a big, big fish. <laughs> Dude, I don't know how much he weighs. I'm gonna say 50, over 50 pounds probably. That thing's a stud. Oh my gosh. <sighs> and the dumb camera didn't want to pick up the fight on my head. Luckily this one was on. But uh, I'm gonna try to show you these teeth best I can. Look at that. Those are some razor, razor sharp teeth. Amazing eyesight. And these are one of the fastest fish that swim out here. Not the fastest, but one of them. <sighs> this is insane. <sighs> I can't believe I caught one this big. This is nuts. 
never caught a wahoo this big in my life. <laughs> One of the finest eating fish out there too. Look how thick this thing is. Wow, razor sharp teeth. It's like a king mackerel in steroids, except they taste so much better. And look at those stripes. How amazing is that? This thing is giant. Look at this swan float 50 miles out. I'm gonna fish around it first. See if there's another dolphin, because I just caught that wahoo, I wanna get back. Barely, not even fit in my 140 quart cooler. I'm not seeing much life under this, so we're gonna get them. We're gonna get this float and get it out of the water. There we go. Make sure we take it back with us and throw it in the garbage. Don't want this plastic floating around. There's already enough of it in the water as is. So let's bring this joker in. This is a big old swan float. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I'm gonna have to pop it some. Okay. You know, this actually might work out because what I can do, oh man, that jig's in a good, is actually use this to cover up my wahoo. Oh golly, it's full of water. Okay, there. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but there we go. Woo. So, you never know what you're gonna see out here. Big old swan float. Hey, giant wahoo. And I'm gonna make my way back in. I wanna keep trolling so bad, but it, it, it is 520. I have about 50 miles to run back, so it's gonna be dark by the time I get back. Whew. What an epic trip so far. That was freaking cool. So it's time to go. I'm gonna try to make it back gonna be a little bit though <laughs> oh man probably be dark so I'll, I'll see y'all tomorrow and we'll clean and cook that wahoo y'all that sucker is huge oh, check this out man what a really really neat experience see if i can roll this over for you oh, look at this wahoo this is the first one we've had on the channel and actually my first wahoo i've ever caught so this is a big giant fish it actually came out to a dry weight of 49 pounds and 61 inches long so what a beast i'm sure it was a little bit over 50 before it bled out everywhere but i'm gonna actually stake it out but since this is such a big fish with a real thick backbone i'm going to kind of fillet it and then make steaks out of the fillet and i'm also going to give a lot of this meat away because this is way more than I'll ever be able to eat. <laughs> but look at this head. Just show you one more time. Check that out. They have some serious, serious teeth. See that? Just like razor sharp scissors. They will cut through everything. As long as they don't get your leader in your mouth though, you can catch them like I did on 100 pound mono. But see that eyeball? Excellent eyesight. And if you didn't know already, Wahoo are actually one of the fastest fish that swims in the sea. They are not the fastest. It's actually a sailfish. A wahoo is one of the second fastest fish at 60 miles an hour underwater. It's like a literally a giant torpedo. So we are going to make this into some manageable pieces. I've already broken the tail. So I'm gonna cut this off. There we go. Get that tail off. Look how beautiful that meat is there. So we're gonna put this on ice. And now I'm just gonna like i said on a smaller one you would stake it out on a bigger one it's kind of hard to get through that bone so i'm going to fillet it first and i'm actually going to do it in pieces so everybody has a different way of doing this but let's start out here make a slice go along the back You don't want to miss any meat on this big old fish here. 
All right. And just right through that skin. Just taking my time. There we go. What a big fish. And then off that backbone and down the other side. All righty, there we go, look at that. Ain't the prettiest job, but we got it done. Now this is how I'm gonna do this. See that, normally you would have another piece on this side, on the other side of this bone, and that would be your stake. But since such a thick backbone, see that sucker? I'm gonna make an incision, leaving the skin on about half an inch, but don't cut the skin off. Try your best. If you mess up, it's okay. I like them fairly thick here. Now this side, you cut all the way down to the skin and through the skin. Now, if you did this right, let's do, get a little bit closer. You'll be able to open that stake up and see that? Now you have a beautiful Wahoo steak. Just like that, you can cook on the grill. See, that's just one way of doing it. It's really cool. You can even cut it in half. There you go. That's a perfectly staked out fish for a big fish. Look at those gorgeous loins on that. So I'm gonna do the same thing, a little bit down to the skin. And like I said, everyone is different. Everyone has different opinions, taste buds, and that's what makes us all human and unique. So if you got your own way of doing it, do it that way. But we're gonna stick with this, check that out. Beautiful Wahoo steak. Cut some of that red meat out. There we go. Check out those Wahoo steaks. Now I'm gonna do this and I'll show you another way of cleaning it. Now you can also cut down the middle around that red meat, which they don't have too much, it's not too bad. And then just fillet it right off the skin. See that? Look at that loin. That would be good if you're making sashimi or small grilled pieces or sushi. You would trim out this red meat and then you would go through and thinly slice. But I'm not today. We're gonna leave that hole. Do the same thing on this one. See that bloodline? You don't wanna have much of that in your meat. It's okay to have a little bit. All right. There's another nice loin. Let's trim out some of that red meat. So what I would do with these pieces is throw them in the fridge, let them chill just for a little bit, let them get a chill, and then finally, finally slice them and make a sushi or sashimi on a plate. We're gonna grill these steaks out. See how pretty that meat is? Way different than king mackerel. So let's start cleaning the rest of this fish. Once again, I'm doing it in pieces because it's big. I mean, this is a huge wahoo. I'm gonna be careful not to pierce those guts. Too bad, yeah. So there we go. Look at that piece just falling off, just like perfect. Get the belly meat. Wow, look at the fat content in that belly meat. Is that not cool? Do we wanna see what's in it? Y'all, if this grosses you out, you can kind of fast forward, but I always like to see what these things have been eating. So I feel something in there. I'm gonna cut it open. I don't know what the heck that is. Looks weird. <laughs> oh, wow, he's got something big in there. Or she. Okay, there's a skeleton. Whoa, look at that. What do y'all think that was? A flying fish, maybe? Big old bait fish. It's been in its stomach for a little bit. 
but I guess what? It still fell from my ballyhoo and my mini chugger, so <laughs> at least I knew I was throwing something good or pulling something good. But that's what was in its stomach. Y'all, so I'm gonna do two different things with this Wahoo, and I've also given a lot of that meat away to about 12 different families, which is amazing. I'm glad to be able to share all this fish because I don't want to freeze it. I have so much in the freezer, and it's awesome to be able to share something so fresh like that. And something we don't get all the time. But I'm gonna do two different things. First thing I wanna do is some fresh Wahoo sashimi, and then we'll grill those steaks. But you have to do some sort of sashimi or sushi with wahoo, such a great meat. So we're gonna thinly slice, real thin, and I'll probably speed up this process here. And as I take these thin slices, gonna lay them on my plate. Just kind of layered, and we'll make a circle. Should be plenty. So now I have my plate of wahoo right there thinly sliced best I could. And then these are my little scraps and all I'm gonna do is make kind of like spicy tuna, except this is spicy wahoo or spicy ono, O-N-O. -O. Ono is actually Hawaiian for good to eat and that's the nickname for wahoo a lot, if I'm not mistaken. So I've chopped up this wahoo. Now if raw fish isn't your style, don't worry. We're doing grilled as well, but I love fresh sashimi. So chop that little bits up so we don't waste any in the bowl. I have some secret sauce here. This is a good friend of mine that has poke bowls, bun keef. If you know, this is a homemade original sauce. This stuff smells so good. It's got some nice spice to it, nice sweet tang. It's gonna be great mixed with this and make a spicy Wahoo dip. So let's grab a nice fresh spoon. Couple spoonfuls, a little goes a long way. There we go. We're gonna mix this up. Man, that's homemade original sauce smells good. All right, that's all it is. Now, let's get this spoonful right in the middle there. Just like that, all right. Now, here's the fun part. I'm gonna take some soy sauce. This is a sweet soy sauce, and this is all personal preference, how much and how little you like. But we're gonna get some soy sauce on there. There we go. Now I have a bag of my wasabi, which is just this horseradish. And I'm gonna cut this corner of this bag, and this is all just presentation. Someone doesn't like it, you can just have this stuff on the side. So we're gonna get some wasabi. Little goes a long way with wasabi, okay? <laughs> that is very strong stuff, but it does add a nice zing and flavor. And then I have some of that homemade original sauce. Alrighty y'all, that's it. Let's give it a try. If you wanna serve it with some rice, you can. It looks delicious. Like I said, it's not like five-star restaurant presentation but I guarantee it tastes just as good. Let's give some of this spicy Ono or spicy Wahoo sashimi a try. I'm gonna try that in the middle first. Mmm. Oh man. That homemade original sauce makes it. It's got a nice kick that's hitting me now, but y'all that is so good. <laughs> I'm actually impressed by that. Typically, I don't make sashimi. Y'all, that is delicious. I love poke bowls, and I love tuna, raw tuna, and this Wahoo is absolutely astonishing and right up there with it. So now I'm gonna take a piece of the Wahoo with some of that homemade original soy sauce and a little bit of that wasabi. I'm gonna take some off there because you don't want to burn yourself. But here we go. Oh, wow. It melts in your mouth. It's not grainy, it's not textury. There's the horseradish kick right there. You feel it in your nose. But I'm gonna be able to eat this entire plate. My brother's the only one that really likes raw fish, but everybody else in the house, they don't care for raw fish like sashimi and poke like I do. So I get to enjoy this on my own. 
This is amazing. If you catch a wahoo, which is completely different than a king mackerel, you wouldn't see me doing this with king. But I am thoroughly impressed how well that turned out. Mmm. Man. That is delicious. I can't believe how fresh that is. Y'all, I'm going to have to enjoy this. And for those of you that don't like sushi or sashimi, don't worry. In this next portion, we're going to go out and grill our steaks. Y'all, it is the next day. So yesterday, you saw me do the sashimi and then the spicy wahoo. So if you don't like eating raw fish, we're going to grill. I have two beautiful wahoo steaks. Look at that. Those are absolutely gorgeous. And then I have one loin that I'm going to do medium rare with some sesame seeds. So what I have here for this loin, super easy. I have some tuxedo sesame seeds and some Himalayan pink salt, freshly cracked black pepper. So let's take some of this Himalayan pink salt. A little goes a long way. Just a hint of black pepper. We wanna taste the fish. There we go. And now I'm gonna come over to my sesame seeds and get a nice coating of sesame seeds on all sides. It's gonna make it nice and crispy. Alrighty, so that one's ready. Very simple on that. Wash my hands real quick and we'll get to doing this one. Now on our steaks, I'm gonna do the same thing except I'm not gonna use the sesame seeds I want to replace that with some Big Mike steak season. Absolutely delicious stuff. And then I have some melted unsalted butter. So I'm going to base this. If you want to use extra virgin olive oil, you can. If you like coconut oil, whatever you like, use that. I like this butter. It gives it a nice, good charred flavor. Now I'm going to take my Himalayan pink salt. Get that nicely rubbed in. See that? Pat that sucker in. Take just a little bit of freshly cracked black pepper. This all-purpose steak season has enough salt and pepper in it already, so you don't want to overdo it. Now I like to put some in my hand. Instead of getting a random coating, you can get it nice and even. Get that rubbed in. It cooks like steak. I mean, that's why I'm using this all-purpose seasoning. It cooks just like steak. So now it's time to do the same thing on the back side. Now what I'm going to do is take the sides and all that excess that's spilled over. I'm going to dip the sides in it. Now these are practically ready to go. The only thing extra, I'm going to have half of a lemon to squeeze on it. So I'm going to wash my hands and I'll see you down at the grill. So I have some natural coals lit up. Look how nice and gray they are with still a flame because this is going to be quick. I'm going to do this loin first. Make sure we get all them sesame seeds on there. Here we go. That one's going to be on there first. And it's just going to be like a minute or two on each side because it's going to be kind of like a medium rare and then we're going to slice it on our cutting board and eat that while our steaks are cooking. I'm going to turn it. It doesn't take long over this flame. Like I said, about every minute, turn it. Y'all, that's a stud of a boat right there. Check out that Viking coming by. Wow, that thing's beautiful. Heck yeah, that's awesome. And we're going to give it one more flip. And then I'm going to hold it over the flame and get that in charred. Now, we are done with that. Now we have something to munch on while our steaks are cooking. Check that out. And let's put our Wahoo steaks on the grill. Well, here we go with the Wahoo steaks. We're gonna do it over direct heat. Just like that. And here we go with the other one. These aren't gonna take long to cook. They're about three quarter of an inch thick. They're gonna get some nice grill marks and be really nice tasting. So while those are cooking, we're gonna slice up our beautiful wahoo. I do about half an inch thick piece. And see how it's rare in the middle? 
and nice and white on the outside. There we go. Now let's plate it. And here comes the last final pieces. I'm gonna actually eat this one for myself. Mm. Really good. Now I have some of this homemade original sauce from my buddy Bun Keith who owns Poke Bowl. That's a very, very good sauce. Now check out that plate of delicious seared Wahoo. See how it's still rare in the middle, but nice and white on the outside. That's exactly what you want. So let's give it a try. Dip it in that sauce. Oh man, I can't wait. Mm. It just melts in your mouth. Such a great appetizer while you're getting ready for the steaks. Man, that was really, really good. And then the spiciness of that sauce, that was excellent. So I'm glad I did that. Let's go check on our steaks. Man, that is great. I'm gonna give them a flip. Look at that grill mark. Give this one a flip. Oh man, those turned out perfect. You want them over direct heat. They're gonna take very little time to cook and you want those grill marks. It's just like cooking steak or chicken versus fish. They hold together very well and uh, they firm up nicely. So we're gonna give these about another five minutes and then we'll be ready to eat. One more thing while it's cooking. Let's add some citrus on there. Got a couple seeds, it's fine. Oh yeah. And that's gonna cook a nice, give it a nice citrusy add on flavor in contrast to all those salty flavors. It's gonna be really good, y'all. Y'all, these steaks are ready. That didn't take very long. So you wanna cook them depending on the thickness and just like you would on any other steak, see how it's pressing down. This is a texture you want. It's kind of like where you take your finger and press it on your thumb, just like that. That's how that feels. So these are ready to go. Don't be afraid if you want to cut into them. See that? Beautiful grill marks on there. We're gonna let these rest as we go upstairs and plate our food. Check that out. Oh man, gorgeous Wahoo steaks. Is that not awesome? Freshly caught, we know exactly where it came from. Let's go up there and plate our food. So we went from the grill to the plate and this may look complicated, it's really not. I have a bed of white rice down there. We have some homemade mango salsa with cilantro, mango, fresh, fresh onion, and some chilies mixed up in it and lime juice. And then I top that. Have a little garnish of cilantro. And then on the side, we have some lime. This is optional, but might as well use it since I have it. Get some in that rice. There we go. Let's take a bite of our fish. I'm gonna try it without anything right now. Check how white and flaky that is. And then I'll try some with the mango salsa. Here we go. Oh, wow. It cooked just like chicken. Super, super tender. It holds together very nice. Such a great flavor. I've recently said that scamp groupers at the top of my list after catching my first one on a jig this year but wahoo has moved to the top of my list of favorite fish to eat mainly because of how versatile it is uh, everything i've made has its own unique flavor but tastes amazing let's give it another bite some of that mango salsa here we go mm. that sweet and tangy contrast goes perfectly with this kind of like cobia it's a firm fish and it cooks just like steak or chicken. Gosh, that is amazing. If you ever have a chance of catching some Wahoo, or if you have a friend that says, hey, I got some for you, definitely take them up on that offer. Oh my goodness, that is great. I'm gonna have to take another bite. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Such a delicious fish. And I've shared this meat with so many people. I did not want to throw a whole bunch of meat in the freezer. I wanted to be able to share it because it was such a big fish and fresh. So I gave it to neighbors, gave it to friends. 
gave it to a lot of people and it fed a lot of families, which is awesome. I'm gonna have to let you go. I hope you enjoyed this video and this catch and cook series. I know it might seem a little long, but I love these full length videos just to try to give you the full experience. Y'all go out there and have a great time on the water. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you enjoy videos like this, go smash that subscribe button down below. I'm gonna continue eating this fish, but I wanna thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. And we'll see you later. I gotta take another bite with that mango salsa some of this fish oh my goodness mm. it's all mine <laughs>